Okay, what do I have to do? Communicate with me, okay? What do I have to do to get that mat back from you? Beats, 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 beats. beats. There's no use trying to reason with them. Shut up, you're not helping. You're right, I'm not helping. Those are your problem. Then shut up. Beans. Wait. Do you want beans? Beans. So you cannibalize your own. Beans. Okay. Beans. Okay, I got the beans. So now I'm gonna give this to you and you're just gonna give me that. <laughs> Finally. Oh. oh God. Filthy animals. Actually, they're plants. Shut up. All right, you guys, so now that I have my mat back that I wanted to do this tech profile on, I could get to this tech profile. I am super, super excited to show this to you guys because um, I actually, why, why this took so long is because I kind of got out of touch with the deck, but like I got out of touch with the deck because um, I was trying way too hard to force a Cleefort Genius's effect, okay? The effect where, you know, where you simultaneously summon to the two zones that it opens up, it gives you a search, and I was trying way too hard hard to, to push for that and I wasn't really just letting the deck you know come together on its own I just wasn't freeing my mind up enough to piece the deck together you know in the way it should have been put together I mean I, I, everything everything was just you know way too forced I kept trying to force brilliant fusion in I kept trying to force all these different things in but when I let everything go and just kind of uh, took a break from the deck for a minute and then sat back down and just kind of uh, zoned in on it and just let the deck come together on its own um, I think I created a monster. <laughs> okay, when I finally, when I finally did that and just freed my mind, um, th uh, this is what I came up with, and I'm very, very happy with it. It has been testing very well, um, especially for Cyber Dragons, which is crazy because this deck is old as hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm super excited about it. I made this deck um, as good and as powerful and as consistent as I could for you guys. This deck profile is going to be unlike the previous, any of the previous Cyber Dragon deck profiles I've done. Okay. Hey guys, um, the reason why is because Cleefort Genius really shakes up the way I wanted to play the deck and stuff, and it shook up the way that I wanted to explore the deck. And so this this deck profile is going to throw a lot of curveballs at you guys. I'm going to be playing cards that you guys have never seen me play before in the deck and stuff like that. But now you guys are probably thinking, just get on with it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to try to explain my card choices the best I can. Um, if I over explain stuff, I'm really sorry. I'm just trying to be very very thorough to get you guys to understand why I changed the deck up in the way that I have. Um, starting off, you know, standard three uh, Cyber Dragons because, you know, it's a Cyber Dragon deck and this is just an amazing card. You get the special summon this guy for free uh, when you go second and stuff. Uh, by the way, this is, I'm just going to warn you right now, this is a hardcore going second deck. Um, just like Cyber Dragons are normally, okay? So, um, you guys are already aware of that. A lot of you guys are already Cyber Dragon players. You know the deck prefers to go second. Uh, but this is a very hard go second deck. Uh, but um, I'm going to show you how the side deck uh, compensates for that. So, the strategy is to uh, to not care if you lose the, the die roll because you you want to go second. And what goes hand in hand with that strategy is being able to just bust any board that your opponent builds. So that is what this deck does. Um, it's just a board buster deck. Uh, so you play a three Cyber Dragon Core though uh, because this is a search card for your search card. Plus you can banish this from your graveyard and, get, uh, and special summon any copy of Cyber Dragon, uh, any Cyber Dragon card actually uh, from your deck onto the field, including itself. Uh, you know for a uh, machine duplication, which is really really good. Um, and then you play a one copy of Cyber. Dragon Dry, um, because Dry is actually really good in this deck now. Um, <laughs> the reason why I cut this uh, before and uh, upped, upped uh, you know, previous deck pro uh, profiles to uh, three uh, Golden Jets is because I was playing Brilliant Fusion, uh, Seraphonite is not a machine, so it made uh, dry, uh, Dry's effect just really bad. You know, you can't make um, all machines level five because it says you can't summon machine, you know, other types except for machine the turn you activate that effect. So uh, Dry and other deck profiles, you know, more rank five spam stuff um, is not as good, but in this deck profile, it's actually really good plus it's another um, cyber dragon name of course for um you know your chimera tech plays um which are really good like you, there's there's some of your best plays in the deck they're just amazing because you know it just uh, goes hand in hand with the strategy of this um you know specific deck profile uh the board buster i guess quote unquote uh, deck profile um that is what this uh, that's that's the aim of this deck and stuff and uh, having an extra cyber dragon name for your chimera tech plays is it just really helps to uh, contribute to that um so that is it for your cyber dragon monsters to play uh, seven cyber dragon monsters and then um three galaxy soldiers um, because Galaxy Soldier, I feel like, is just, at this point, it's just an extension of the Cyber Dragon engine. Um, and I kind of wanted to divide this um, deck between uh, several different engines. Uh, first off, 
Um, you know, it's like uh, what I did with this deck profile is I, I literally just combined I just combined the different engines together. That's really what I did. And um, this so this first part is you know the standard Cyber Dragon engine that you guys are used to seeing. And then um, I added, of course, I added a while back Cosmic Compasses because going second Cosmic Compasses, you know, spawns tokens. Uh, plus this thing combos amazingly with Cleave Fort Genius. I mean, uh, if you already have Cleave Fort Genius on the field, your opponent's got monsters. You know, you summon this thing, you summon your tokens to those spots, and you get a search. It's really good. Uh, Cosmic Compass uh, helps you go into Cleave Fort Genius uh, going second. It's a one card, you know, uh, it's, a, it's just a one card uh, Link Monster is really what it is, and it's just a it's just a really good card. It's a machine duplication target. This card just really, really helps fix you going second. It helps, um, you know, uh, if you don't draw like all your Kaijus or, or uh, not enough of any of your other engines, you draw just like mostly of your Cyber Dragon engine, uh, this kind of gets you there because this is like, like I said, a one card Link Monster, and it gets it to where you can, you know, make your um, rank five boards and stuff easier. This card's just really, really good. But then I play a one golden jet. Um, I find one dry and one golden jet perfect because I use dry a lot just for like the Chimera Tech plays a lot. I mean, I do use it for the rank five plays sometimes, you know, because uh, you do summon more machines, you know, because Cleave Fort Genius and stuff. So this, uh, this effect is more alive, like I was explaining earlier, than it has been in previous builds. But golden jet is still an amazing card because this allows you to go into anything, you know, it's just, it's just a, it's an arguably superior uh, Cyber Dragon dry because, you know, it doesn't care. Uh, it doesn't have a stipulation on its effect. Let's put it that way. It just makes itself a level five. It doesn't care if you go into a machine. It, you go into Pleiades or you go into Durendal. Like, it's just a really good card. Um, and then uh, what you guys, uh, some more of what you guys are used to seeing in here. Um, so two Jizukiru, um, one Gamer Seal. I am playing the Slumber. Uh, just don't draw the Slumber and this in the same hand and you're fine. <laughs> it's kind of like your your Garnet Brilliant Fusion. Just, just don't do it. And the reason why I'm playing a smaller Kaiju engine um, is A, because, you know, uh, you know, it's just, it, it fits well in the deck you don't need a large kaiju engine because you have the chimera tech plays and everything else so like uh, having a large kaiju engine is kind of overkill and then b you know um especially it's overkill because um um you know you know you can search just a kiru off of a uh, cyber repair plant anyways so you know you don't you don't really care um and then uh you know it's just uh slumber's down to one i would pl play probably a bigger kaiju engine if slumber was at three still so uh yeah you just you just this is the perfect ratio in my opinion for this deck uh, but what you guys aren't used to seeing is this okay um this really 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 helps the deck out a lot. I, I I have fallen in love with playing this in the deck um, because um, these are all lights for Galaxy Soldier. Um, your gammas are lights. You know your drivers light. A uh, light for Galaxy Soldiers, and it protects you from Ash Blossom. Okay, um, and why that is so important now is especially because you're playing this engine. So I started playing this engine, um, replacing the Brilliant Fusion engine because these are machines. Um, it gives you scales, and I have not regretted it, um, especially in this build. Um, in previous builds, um, I, I've considered this and I've tested it. It didn't test as well uh, but, but that was before the release of Cleefort Genius like I said earlier Cleefort Genius really uh, messed up the way I was thinking about the deck and stuff but in a good way it made me see different angles and it made me kind of improve upon the deck uh, because Cleefort Genius is just a really good link monster for the deck and plus when you uh, link summon using mics you know this stacks in your extra deck and if you do draw a second copy of this you know just uh, put a scale and then like pendulum summon it back out this is really good um, but what, what I was saying about the uh, Cypher engine is that um, you know when you pitch off of a uh, guitar um, you need, you need with, with Cyber Dragons, guys, you need every single card in your hand to be good, okay? This is really what I'm getting at here. And since you do need every single card in your hand to be good, okay? Um, especially going seconds, okay? Um, since this is an older deck, you, you really do need every card in your hand to be good. Plus, you want every card in your hand to be good and live anyways. That's just good deck building in general, you know? Just a good rule of thumb. Uh, you want every card in your hand to, that you draw to be usable in that, in that in, you know, in that instant stuff. And I really feel like Gamma is that card because it helps protect um, you from like going neg. Like if you pitch a card off of a, you know, Galaxy Soldier, for example, and Galaxy Soldier's effect triggers and they go ash on your Galaxy Soldier, you want to gamma that and get a free, um, you know, Omega. Um, if they ash this, you want to make sure that you gamma that, you know, and get a free Omega. Um, not to mention, uh, you know, you can use uh, your, your stuff for like Link Summons anyways, uh, which I'll get to in the extra deck. But um, like, the, long story short, um, all these engines work so well together going second. Like I combined, you know, I combined it, you know, the Cypher engine, the Symphonic Warrior, engine the kaiju engine the cyber dragon engine all together and uh, i guess technically the cosmic compass engine i guess you could say i combined it all that together
together and created this monstrosity and I am super super happy with it I'm so happy with you know all the monster ratios and stuff I feel like they're perfect um, but let's get into the spells now though so for the spells I'm playing a uh, three machine duplication um, the reason being is because machine duplication might be your strongest card in the deck um, because um, machine duping on cyber dragon core you know like core itself is a plus one because it searches your search card then going machine dupe on top of that getting out two cyber dragons is really really good um, going machine dupe on your um, on your cosmic compass um, is really good it uh, goes into uh, you know cleave for genius uh, that way um, just it's just a I mean plus uh, you know this combos with cleave for genius you know you you uh, you machine dupe and summon your cyber dragons you, you know your two cyber dragons to the zones that uh, machine uh, not machine psh, that cleave for uh, genius has opened up and then you get a search so uh, this just all combos well together and like um, and if you do draw too many copies of this um, the logic is you'll pitch it off of the uh, symphonic warrior guitar anyways uh, because that's really good a symphonic warrior guitar um, that's something I, I should have mentioned a second ago is really good at um, getting like if you do draw that one dead card um, it's really good at, about getting that one dead card out or if you draw like too much of like your sci frame engine a uh, galaxy soldier uh, between galaxy soldier and the guitar it's really good about getting those cards kind of kind of uh, making those dead cards useful you know that's what I'm trying to get at um, between everything it's just it, it, it all plays really well together I've been really happy with how the deck's been performing um, so uh, two a uh, cyber repair plant because the more I play this deck and stuff over time the more I realize that two is the perfect number um, but then uh, for this deck profile since it doesn't really focus on the rank fives as much and since I actually end up using my panzer dragon for Clee Fort genius more than rank fives these days um, instant fusion just at two uh, plus I kept I kept running into the problem where I was drawing three of it and I didn't like it so cutting it down to two was just perfect and it opened up room for other cards which was great um, and then um, pot of desires I play two of it um, because it's just a really good card fixes dead hands and uh, you playing you know the the chances of banishing um, all of one of your engine are slim and if and sometimes you want to banish all of one of your engine and it helps you uh, do that as well so uh, pot of desires is really great um, kaiju slumber com uh, completes the kaiju engine of course you know it's the dark hole um, foolish burial because uh, this is like an extra copy of cyber dragon or cyber dragon core essentially because going second you foolish out core then you banish core and you go off that way and if you have a machine duplication in your hand you go banish core core for core machine dupe and you're off to the races so uh, foolish burial is just really great uh, reasoning because this is my spicy spicy tech it's so good um so you know your opponent's probably gonna go call five because you're playing cyber dragons uh you hit a two you know which is like your your cyber dragon core you activate machine dupe you know go off um or you hit like one of your kaijus you have like link material etc um you know you hit your cosmic compass which is a level one <laughs> so like um you know your levels are all over the place long story short so reasoning is really great um i play one soul charge because this card gets you there <laughs> like um you know the spells kind of came down to the wire because i stuffed so many monsters in here so i just kind of picked the best spells that the deck uh, could play um and then um you know so like i was saying like soul charge uh, really just gets you there fixes dead hands um also um if your opponent has an answer for everything that you're throwing at them um in your last card is soul charge well you get to bring everything back and do it all over again so <laughs> it's just really good um and then uh, monster reborn is the 40th card um if this card gets banned again just re uh, just replace this with an upstart goblin simple as that um because if this card wasn't back this card in the deck would be an upstart just that simple i like playing 39 card decks matter of fact i was testing this at 41 with an upstart just because i like to play upstart just that much i'm really paranoid i'm serious i get like nervous and stuff and paranoid if i if i'm not playing an upstart it's like my safety net i love playing upstart it's one of my favorite cards in the game um but um a monster reborn is really good at going second you know just this this card's so sacky this helps you further sack your opponent plus you can use you know whatever monster you bring back out of their graveyard for link material for like decode talker or something anyways so uh yeah monster reborn really really good card and it's the perfect card uh, besides upstart goblin that is right now um it's the it's the other card you know to make 40 cards in the deck and it's just it, uh, to me i feel like this this monster and spell ratio is absolutely perfect so for the extra deck um two cyber dragon nova which is right here oh my gosh i love i love this mat this mat looks so freaking sick um anyways though so cyber dragon nova um, you use this, you know, this is just like your main to play extender and stuff. Uh, I keep saying this, this is the best card in the extra deck. It's always been the best card in the extra deck since the Cyber Dragon structure deck came out. Um, the reason why is because this helps you build big boards. You, um, and then later on when Cyber Dragon Infinity came out, um, it lets you slap Infinity on top of it. So this is the perfect ratio. Um, you know, there, there have been times, you know, in the distant past where I've wanted three Novas, but normally you just, you never want, you never want more than two Novas and you never want more than two Cyber Dragons. Matter 
of fact, most of the time you or uh, in a normal match, you normally uh, you know would just end up summoning one Cyber Dragon, which makes me uh, you know when I'm feeling edgy, like makes me want to cut Cyber Dragon to one, like Cyber Dragon Infinity uh, to one. But I just I never do. I never cut Infinity to one. But um, so this is like the perfect ratio, though. Just long story short, perfect ratio. It's been the perfect ratio. Um, uh, Constellar Pleiades almost said Cyber Dragon Pleiades. It might as well be Cyber Dragon Pleiades now. Oh my gosh, it's the only deck that plays this card anymore. I swear. Uh, but yeah, you go uh, uh, you go into Pleiades uh, because um, you know you you play Kaiju, so you can like you know Kaiju your opponent, then bounce the Kaiju back. It's very very good, very trolly. Um, you know, it's one of my favorite combos in the deck. Um, Durendal because the sun breaks your hand. Uh, plus you will have um, a Symphonic Warrior uh, guitar. Um, face up a lot of the time still, you know, after you resolve, you know, after you pitch a card, you know, and summon out your mics, uh, you'll have like a, that face up still, so you could use um, that for a Durendal target instead of Brilliant Fusion, so that is very good. Um, then uh, Greedy uh, Saramea. Um, this card was the uh, 15th card in the extra deck. I was sitting, I was sitting at 15 before because I was still playing. Um, I was still playing uh, Invoked, uh, what's the, uh, Ryzen. Uh, I was playing Invoked Ryzen. Um, the reason why I cut it is because I cut Instant Fusion down to two. Um, so I was like, uh, if I'm only playing two Instant Fusion and I, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm going for the Panzer Dragon anyways. Uh, and I could play, and I, plus I can like, you know, shuffle the Panzer Dragon back into the extra deck using the Cyber Repair Plant. I'm just like, uh, you know, you might as well make room for the Saramea. So like, that's, well, that's that was the 15th card as the Saramea because this is really good against uh, Trick Stars and Trick Stars are a tier one deck, guys it's a good deck so uh, being able to beat them is great <laughs> you know um, and then for the last Xyz monster um, I brought back the Hope Harbinger <laughs> and the reason why is because you can overlay with it with Chimera Tech and uh, Omega um, now you, know, you like your Omega effect don't get me wrong but um, a lot of the times and this is what I found um, I kept wanting to overlay my Omega with uh, Chimera Tech yes I kept wanting to do that um, and uh, there's nothing better to overlay for than number 38 and the reason why is because this lets you uh, of course negate a spell on your opponent turn which you know it's reactive which is really good um you know 3,000 attack 2,500 defense this guy is huge which is also really great but the main thing is um you know it helps the other two things that this card does that people forget about is that it helps your Xyz monsters out um, if you read its effect but the main effect that you're after here um is that um if when an opponent's monster declares an attack you can detach one Xyz material from this card change the attack target to this card and perform damage calc in other words uh, this helps protect your Cleefort genius or, or whatever link monster you have up. This helps protect your one link monster. Um, it helps protect you. You know the other stuff. Uh, this card is actually really, really great. Um, it's just uh, I like extending into this thing a lot in this deck. So um, I, I ended up adding it. I ended up adding this card pretty early too, and I haven't been upset with it. So uh, try that out. It's really, really great. Um, then the other Chimera Tech card, uh, Mega Fleet Dragon, uh, because this card is really, really good. You summon. You, like, what's really great is your if your opponent has a monster in the extra monster zone, you special summon Cyber Dragon, and then you like you know use their monster and your cyber dragon go into this and then you have 2400 but then you like normal summon like core for example you know what i mean and search your search your card and then uh you know go into clee fort genius you basically just kind of walk up into clee fort genius with these things with your chimera techs and it's just really good i love i love 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 that which uh which also helped fuel me into making this into um, a pure going second deck that's really uh, playing these and like seeing just the the amount of carnage you can do with these and stuff and uh, you know just playing just seeing how the you know playing this deck over and over and like you know the boards you can bust going second with this deck you know playing these and stuff is just really what made me it forced my hand to just to just like I just gave up I just gave up I was like you know what I'm not even gonna try to make this into a go first combo deck this is going to be your worst nightmare if you win the die roll deck <laughs> you know what I mean so uh, or if you lose the die roll because I just picked going second you know I don't care um, so that's that's what's great about this deck like oh, oh you lose the die roll they go first you, you okay um, you win the die roll you pick to go second it's really great <laughs> that's, that's what's great about going second decks like you don't really care about the die roll as much which is fantastic and then uh, for your last fusion um, one panzer dragon because this is the best instant fusion target for the deck because it's a level five light machine so you can go into platies with it you can go into anything with it plus you can let this die off of the instant fusion and pop something off of its effect which is something that you do do every now and then uh, don't forget about it um, and then proxy dragon because uh, you go in I go into this with like even my like you know sight frame stuff <laughs> to make 
you know, I just I do that sometimes. Uh, you can you kind of walk up into a decode talker with it because um, you know a side frame uh, driver is you know a normal monster. So what you do is you use your gamma, your driver, and this thing, and then you use another monster to go into talk uh, talker. You know, you kind of walk up into decode talker that way. Um, but then you play finally your Clee Four Genius, the card I keep talking about that shook this whole deck up. It it, it turned the deck upside down. It really did, uh, but in a good way because this card is great. I fall in love with this card. Um, I love love um you know that we have a machine link monster now not just any machine link monster an actual pretty good one <laughs> and uh, one that i like to go into a lot in this deck so a uh, big welcome addition to the deck um as was mega fleet mega fleet was also a pretty big welcome addition to the deck uh, more so now that we have cleef war genius but uh, all in all guys i think that um, all 15 cards in my extra deck i have been very very happy with uh, i haven't felt like the huge need to throw in any expensive link monster you know like a pro uh, like a firewall dragon or you know anything like that i will say though that you can do that because cosmic compass is an amazing card there are times where it spams a lot of tokens you know what I mean for you to use um, I never find myself something more than three though because this is the extra deck that I choose to play um, I choose to play it this way because um, I, I just kind of like the challenge more I kind of like looking at cards I just have laying around and putting this kind of stuff together and making um, a really competitive cyber dragon deck you know that way it's just something I've always enjoyed doing and uh, but long story short guys that is it for the extra deck and I am very happy with it as well so let's move on to this side deck because that is probably the most interesting part of this deck profile so uh, starting this side deck off um, I I play three sanctums and two sides so in other words I throw it an artifact engine uh, the reason why is because this deck is terrible at going first okay it's awful at it um, it doesn't try to go first it doesn't care to go first so um, when your opponent makes you go first uh, you know when they pick up on that you need to be able to uh, not lose so <laughs> you, you uh, ghost out so what I do is I actually ghost out my kaiju so uh, Jizukiru, Jizukiru, Gamma Seal, Slumber and then Foolish Burial that's what I do um, I'll show you guys that I'll show you guys exactly Exactly how to side. Instead of doing combos in this deck, I'll show you guys exactly how to side. How about that? Uh, here in a second, I'll lay out all the cards and show you guys what I take out and stuff. Uh, but um, so, uh, anyways, uh, so before I get to that though, let's go over this. Um, so um, you know the artifact engine. Um, these to replace the gammas because you know um, you can play a Swift Scarecrow. Uh, and I have played Swift Scarecrow in the past. You know you've seen my deck profiles and stuff. Swift, Swift Scarecrow is really good, but um, this is better since you're playing the side frame engine because you just take out the gammas, put in these. It just makes perfect sense. Um, I play. Um, three Dinko Seka because um, you know you don't like to lose to a back row or paleo or anything plus this is a light off a of galaxy soldier so really you know uh, you, you could pitch off a of galaxy soldier I could say so it's a really good card and then um, I put in these three uh, two scoldings and a warning uh, why you guys are gonna be like well, why aren't you playing strikes because uh, scolding does more than strikes so that's why I'm playing that to you know gives you more versatility um, so play that and I was kind of sitting at 14 cards in the side deck and um, I just was like oh, I guess I can add another scolding uh, not really i guess i can add a strike uh, not really what i ended up doing was throwing in a one day of peace <laughs> like, i just couldn't figure out what else to put it in the side deck so i was like a oh, 15th card uh, well, what's a card that can kind of get me somewhere you know if i break and i'm like one day of peace it's really good you get to draw a card to try to unbrick yourself and you're safe you know and like no player takes damage so um, this buys you a couple turns or a turn or however much so that is the 15th card that i added and um i have been happy with it like, i guess like i mean there, it's kind of the most irrelevant card in the side deck but like um it's it works i mean it does its job if you need it to so um i guess you can you can replace this with it with a uh, moral talk if you wanted to you know to complete your artifact engine uh but uh, i just i uh, just haven't felt the need to i think just the three sanctum two scythe is just fine okay so to explain this my face cam is going to be somewhere over here um and here is the entire main deck okay so i'm um, looking at this you can tell i mean just you know I, I i just showed you the deck but i mean just looking at this you can tell that the deck really wants to go second i mean if the kaijus didn't give it away uh or the fact that the cyber dragons didn't give it away i, I don't know what will um so what you do is you have to um you know side for going first um that's what you kind of have to do and so what i do uh, a lot of the time when i when i know i'm going first or sometimes i choose to go first i mean it just kind of depends on the situation um but like uh, what i'll do is i'll take out the kaijus if i know i'm going first and replace them with the sanctums um it, it just makes sense you're not going to use your kaijus because you know you're going first i mean i I know I've told you guys in the past that I never take out Jizakiru, but 
um, and that's that's a that's a habit that I had for a long time. But with this, I actually take out Jizz and Kiru a lot. Um, you know, that's uh, just uh, sometimes guys sometimes some, sometimes I tell you things and it's right at the time, but it, it's kind of it kind of becomes wrong later, and it's just it's just how Yu-Gi-Oh goes. Uh, but um, so the next up, you have to you have these uh, sides to put in, right? And that's pretty simple. Um, I take out the slumber because you're not playing kaiju's, so it makes sense to take out the slumber. Uh, put that in, and then um, I take out the foolish burial. And the reason why I take out foolish burial is because it really sucks going first. Okay, I mean sometimes it fixes your hands going first. Sometimes you know so every now and then I'm happy to see this card, but normally I want to see this card going second. So uh, because of that, um, I just take it out. It's just not really that great of a card. Um, so this is what I find myself doing. Um, take out, you know, take out your um, you know, going second cards, putting you going first cards. Um, except you'll notice that this card right here is still here. Okay, um, what I find myself doing a lot in this deck is I'll cut out Cosmic Compass as well going first and just straight like just straight up like a savage uh, put in Solemns or Dinkos depending on the matchup so just like this <laughs> like I'll just take those out put these in and then of course you know to finish to wrap up going first um, you'll take these out and then put these in so now you are completely ready to go first um, you know you have cited out a lot of cards but you cited in a lot of cards too um, in other words um, you have like the way I designed this deck is to where you can um, you know you just literally um, you know the the you go second you plan for going second and then um, whenever you are in a go first situation whether you want to go first or you're forced to go first you're able to take out all unnecessary cards and do that and that's kind of um, that's kind of the point um, I will say um, I will a lot of the times take out um, dry as well and put in the one day I um, mean then I'm um, also you know instead of replacing the cosmic compasses with the with the solemn brigade you can replace them you know with dinkos uh, just whatever you guys you know uh, feel like doing um, if you guys don't uh, feel like like uh, replacing the gammas uh, basic long story short um, you know with how this side deck is you're able to um, um, you know side for going first but like have enough um have enough variety or have enough um, I don't know how to put this so uh, have enough um, depth to where you can uh, change change your going first strategy ever so slightly depending on what deck you're going against them um, for example uh, you wouldn't put uh, dinkos in against uh, I don't know you wouldn't put dinkos in against uh, pendulums for example really um, but you'll definitely put these in against paleos um, what you'll put in against pendulums is probably uh, more leaning towards the solemn brigade because uh, this uh, the solemn brigade you know just negates a whole pendulum summon that's really good um, um, it stops, you know, summons in general. It just stops. I mean, scolding stops just about anything, um, you know. Uh, so that's just a really good. Um, plus, you want to see, you know, you want to see uh, sides and stuff, um, you know, against. Uh, you want to see, I mean, your artifact sanctum, so you can summon scythe um, against uh, just about anything, <laughs> really. Because, um, long story short, guys, um, going first, um, you know, if you're, if you're a cyber dragon player, you have to acknowledge that, like, um, if you're going first, you're you're at a disadvantage, and um, your opponent is going to have a better going first board than you okay <laughs> they are just gonna and especially if they go second they're gonna break your board okay not only are you playing an older deck um, and stuff even if it is you know even if it is a really good going second deck and stuff if you're forced to go first um, you know you are at a huge disadvantage a very huge disadvantage your opponent's deck's gonna be better than yours so what you have to do is you have to be able to kind of ghost in whatever you need to make uh, to make it to where you have the least and the smallest chance of losing so that is the whole purpose of the side deck let's see what test hand I get really quick though before I end this to see if I'm if I'm not full of crap oh it looks like I'm not full of crap oh look at that beautiful going second hand oh my gosh and I even drew gamma oh these powers my Yugi Jesus powers are too strong oh man undefeated with cyber dragons I wish but guys I really hope that you enjoyed this deck profile I really hope that this helps you out or at, at the very least I hope that I hope that it gets you thinking about the deck in different ways and stuff because that is kind of my goal showing you these decks and stuff is to kind of like make you realize that if you sit down, um, you know, and really play with cards and stuff, you can take an old deck and make it playable. I mean, you can make it at the very, very least really fun to play, and that is exactly what Cyber Dragons are. It's probably the funnest deck to play ever. I mean, at least in my opinion, I love playing this deck, guys, but you already know that. Um, I would love to hear what you think about this deck down in the comment section, and once again, if you guys, you know, innovate the deck in any sort of way, I would love to hear about that down in the comment section as well, or, you know, hear about your spicy text and stuff that you play in the deck. But thank you so much for watching again, guys. I truly appreciate Appreciate it, and until next time, be sure to dick slap that like button and subscribe. Subscribe! <laughs>